Hello and welcome back to another episode of Starfield Console Mods. This is part 11 and we've gone over some amazing mods so far. Now a few days back there was an update to Starfield and it removed the ability to upload creations with altered INI files, meaning that some mods are now broken and I've had problems with a few mods not working properly. So mods from previous videos may no longer be working as intended and I just wanted to let you know. And I've had problems with testing some mods for this video as well. So hopefully they're working on fixing some of the issues. So in the meantime, I'm going over some smaller mods. So we have 12 mods to look at and we're going to jump straight into it. Starting with the mod you can see on the screen already called your personal space station. Your own personal space station filled with all the amenities a Galaxy Explorer needs. It's fairly small and personal, housing all of the workstations, displays and storage to get you started exploring the galaxy. It's fully furnished with the different rooms like a bedroom and a room with a mission board inside. It has kitchen and bathroom and even a small command center. The mod plans to add more to the station with several rooms being off limit. But as far as player homes go, this has been one of my favorite ones so far. I really like the way it looks on the inside. The station is located at the Tau Ceti system in orbit around Tau Ceti 3 if you're looking for it in game. Helmet Armory, this mod adds to the game 24 brand new helmets for you to equip. Some are lore friendly, some are unique like the ones that are made from animal skulls, and some you will recognize like this old school Brotherhood of Steel helmet or Predator helmet. To get these unique items, you simply have to craft them at the brand new workbench located in the build menu at your outpost. Build Walls, another small but good mod for you to try out. It simply adds to the game walls as a build feature in the decoration menu at your outposts. The walls can help you better to separate rooms or add features to your apartment. Or if you have the build anywhere mod, you can make some improvements to constellation like I'm doing in the video. Bigger trees and rocks. This is one of the best mods to install because it just makes planets and exploration feel better. The mod enhances the natural landscape by enlarging most trees, rocks and exotics, creating a more majestic and immersive environment. Explore a universe where trees tower above rocks and take on impressive proportions, adding a new sense of wonder and skill to your adventures. Whether you're navigating dense forests or traversing rocky terrains, bring a fresh, grandiose feel to your exploration, making every journey more epic. Embrace the beauty and grandeur of nature on a cosmic scale with this unique mod. And as I mentioned, it's definitely a mod I recommend that everyone installs because it just makes exploring look better. Mantis Vigilante. This armor replaces the regular Mantis armor found in the Mantis lair in-game. Again, it's got a predator style shape to it or more alien shape to it and it has more glowing parts. Next to the armor in the lair is a box containing a belt and weapon to add to your Mantis suit. It's just a simple mod that replaces the Mantis armor with a different looking Mantis armor if you prefer this one to the regular Mantis armor in game. Face Redesign is a simple mod that redesigns some of the NPC faces. It replaces the faces of characters like Sarah, Andrea, Sam Coe, Jessamine Griffin, and a few others. I'm not going to say it's 100% improves their faces, I guess that would be subjective, but it definitely makes their faces look different. If you're not happy with the look of your companions in the vanilla game, then maybe this mod will be your thing. Cheat Menu has finally arrived in Starfield and allows you to do a whole bunch of things. It allows you to add XP or level up your character as much as you want. It allows you to give yourself any item in game, including all weapons, armors, health items, credits as well. It also adds a bunch of cheat options, including the ability to 100% pass contraband scans. It gives you god mode, infinite ammo, oxygen and jetpacks. Increases scan distance, infinite and instant grav jumps and ship boosts. No fall damage, perfect stealth, perfect pickpocketing, infinite carry weight, no weapon sway and much more. The mod is not fully complete though, I want to see some other stuff added to it including the ability to change weather and time of day for example, and there are some other features I've seen in Cheap Menu in Fallout which had some more stuff so I'd like to see that added. So a simple and easy to use Cheat Menu mod. Shadow 
Ship Extension. This is a mod that adds to the game more ship parts to the Stroud Eklin ship vendor. The mod is aimed at filling the role of some utilities missing in vanilla shipbuilding while trying to stay as close to the vanilla aesthetic as possible. The point of the mod is more adding in ship parts that connect other parts, so stairs, corridors, and splitters. It's worth it simply to have a staircase in your ship to get to the next level up or down rather than using the stupid ladders that come with the vanilla game. Of course, you'll need to do a bit of redesigning of your ship once you install the mod, but it is worth it to get these better connecting parts for your ships that will just make your interiors flow a lot better. Neon Vertigo and Neon Overhaul. This mod for the interior and exterior of Neon amplifies the city into a more cyberpunk cityscape. Inside, they've added back the original Sky High Lightning Rod Dome roof, making the main part of Neon a lot taller, and the buildings have been expanded slightly upwards to match the taller feel of the city. Lights and signs have been improved for the main strip, and one new addition is an upstairs area to the Terrebrew Coffee of Neon, and some new seating as well for the coffee shop. The exterior has also had some sizable upgrades, and they've made the dome bigger and more imposing, so the first time you land in Neon, it hits much harder. They've changed the lighting on the outside from more Christmas theme to a colder and more hostile mix of cool and warm lights. They've also expanded some buildings and added windows, lights, and detailing to further enhance the pack it all in cyberpunk vibe. There's also a brand new boat loader truss kind of thing which stretches between Neon and the spaceport making it look a lot less empty and actually like people live here and use the spaceport and it's probably my favourite part of the mod. The mod is just starting with more parts planned and I hope that the mod author adds in some more upstairs parts to the strip since it has been expanded upwards but I like what I see so far with the Neon Vertigo overhaul mod. Cyber Runner Sky Suite this mod overhauls the Neon Sky Suite into a Cyber Runner dream home. Fully furnished with unlimited storage chests, three workbenches, working Ryujin mission board, as well as hard to obtain Neon apparel like Benjamin Bayou's suit and a striker's coat without headwear. Both the interior and exterior balcony are decorated and all clutter items have been static so they cannot be accidentally picked up or blown up. Our final mods are two more Star Wars mods called Free Star Rebels and Star Wars City Editions. The first mod transforms the various Freestar Collective outfits into Rebel Alliance ones, complete with body morphs. So what's been replaced? The outfit changes are, the Aquila Guard has changed into the Tantiv IV Consular Guard, the Militia is changed into the Endor Rebel Trooper, Ranger Vest and Trench Coat is now Rebel Officer, Ranger Spacesuit is now the Rebel Pilot Suit with Kit Bashed Sealed Helmet, and first mech pilot is now rebel pilot suit with classic open helmet. The second mod simply adds many Star Wars ships and decorations to Aquila City and New Atlantis, with many more decorations to come in the future. The additions for now are only found at the spaceport with Imperial shuttles, TIE fighters, X-wings, speeders as well as some other smaller decorations lying around. The only other big change is the shuttle in New Atlantis has had a makeover. It's not a lot, but you combine this mod with all the other Star Wars mods and it looks really cool. And I'm sure there are a lot more Star Wars themed decorations being planned for not just in New Atlantis and Aquila, but other cities in the game as well. Guys, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I covered some of the more smaller mods in this one, so there wasn't a whole lot of detail to go over in each of them. But after all the issues I had with the recent update to the game, breaking mods and having tested some mods that just simply weren't working, I decided to go over some of the more smaller ones but hopefully some mods will be fixed or at least removed from the creation club when they're not working and I'll be able to go over some bigger mods or better mods in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more Starfield and I will see you in the next one. Bye.